Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Black Talent TV's Beat in the Talk. Of course, I am your hostess with the mostest, Miss Simone Jackson, here to bring you guys another great episode of Beat in the Talk. Of course, you guys know we are a podcast who have engaging conversation with amazing intellectual guests in the entertainment industry. I'm really excited about our next guest, actually. Um, you might sound familiar to some of you guys because we actually did a road up interview on him last year, but we are, this is our first time actually doing a podcast interview with him. We're really excited. Um, he's a young, uh, gifted young man and an actor who is going to be being seen on so many different things. Um, you guys might remember him from BET's The Quad. Um, he's been on the award winning web series called Cream and Coffee. He also, just a little, uh, little tidbit for y'all, he made his directorial debut in a short film called Largo. But you also guys can see him in Love, Simon, and of course the huge movie Superfly. I am super excited to see exactly where this, this, this gifted young man will go with his career. Please, everybody, welcome Mr. Terrell Hill. Hello! Hey, hey what, that, was, uh, that was probably one of the best introductions I ever had. What's going on? <laughs> awesome! Cool! I- Got to hear from Black Talent TV. I did my homework. <laughs> uh, what's up? That's what's up. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we are so happy to have you on. Like I said, you are doing so many big things. You got so many different things going on. So I know, you know, you are every which way. So I'm really glad you took the time to come down and sit with us. Um, you know, we're really happy that you are here. And Mr. Terrell, I just want to, you know, start off with the interview with you, start off with our first question. You know, what began your journey into acting? What made you want to act? Well, I feel like acting was something I always wanted to do growing up, but I'm from Reno Valley, California, and ain't nobody really from there like that. So growing up, I ain't see no images like that. I didn't think it was possible. It wasn't until I came to Atlanta for college where I was in film school and I was directing and I was around people who were aspiring and I tried it for the first time and it felt more natural than anything I'd ever did. Um, I think going to film school, working behind the scenes and always being interested in being in front of the camera made me extra enthusiastic, but I also think it helped with my confidence. Mm-hmm. It felt natural because I had the other side for so long that I guess part of me always wanted to just try it. So things just kind of worked out and now I do both so it's cool yeah that is cool and you know it's it's I I really like your answer I like like how you said how acting gave you confidence you know because it it, to me you you do have to have a lot of confidence to act because honestly if I had all those cameras around me I'm not gonna lie I'd probably just pass out but that's just me (laughs) so I'm glad you have the confidence you can't can't be that that (laughs) you're running this podcast pretty well I don't I don't really see the lack of confidence but I guess it is not a, you know, on camera thing. I hear you. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole different ballpark, you know, doing this and being and, and acting, you know, with all those cameras, with all those different people. And that, that's, that's it's a whole different ballpark. But, you know, uh, thank you for the compliment. And you also do good in your, your, your uh, role as well. Um, you. But, you know, as an actor, Terrell, can you tell me what type of roles do you gravitate to? So I'm in this weird place in my career right now. I know what I want to do. But this is also just the beginning stages. So a lot of times, uh, many of the roles that I've played, um, they've all kind of been aggressive. I love it personally. Uh, I mean, the key word is booked. I'm not necessarily uh, complaining about booking a role. However, I can't wait till I get the opportunity to show some range. I feel like uh, that's the ones I get asked to do mm-hmm. all of television. I think my circle knows what I'm capable of and I don't necessarily believe Hollywood has had a chance to see me in that light. And I can't wait for the day where I get to prove myself because in these independent films and in these shorts and in projects like those that I'm attached to, or even that I write sometimes, I like to challenge myself and step outside of my comfort zone. Um, So you know, as of right now, I don't have the luxury to just pick and choose, but I'm just paying my dues and I'm grateful. So, you oh, know, yeah. I'm going to do whatever feels, whatever feels right. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. And you're right. It, it will definitely just take that one role 
that one role that will, you know, will help you show your range and show, you know, Hollywood what, what you're truly capable of an actor. And then boom, you're just going to be everywhere. You're not going to be able to sleep. That's how much of everywhere you're going to be. So yeah, uh, it's definitely going to just take that one role. So I can't I'm, wait to see, you know, that grittiness, you know what I mean? That's, that's, you know, that's what I can't wait to see. And I can't wait to see that role for you because, you know, you definitely got it in you. So I definitely can't wait to see what, what, you know, that role will be when you finally get to book it, you know? Of course. Thank you. And I received that. That really does mean a lot. Yeah, uh, of course. Oh. You know, <laughs> we all have people we all look up into, you know, in our industries. Uh, who do you look up to acting wise and why? So I have a lot, but this year, number one on the list is Wesley Snipes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Wesley Snipes. I haven't seen one movie from Wesley that I didn't like. Agreed. I feel like no matter what kind of character he plays, you're going to love his character. Uh, Wesley Snipes, no doubt, off mm-hmm. the top. That's, that's just that. I mean, uh, did you have anything particular you want me to talk about with Wesley? Because, I mean, that's just... <laughs> Wesley, that's Wesley. Wesley. <laughs> that's great. Wesley no, I love Wesley, too. <laughs> you, know what, you know what it is? I feel like a lot of the roles that I've played reminded me well, I can't even say that because I haven't been blessed to play the type of roles that Wesley's played. But yeah. I feel like I admire Wesley's characters that he's played. I've fallen in love with every character he's played. Uh, Blade, New Jack, Demolition Man, yeah. White Man. And I've never seen him play a role that he didn't, he didn't like completely blow out of water. Right, There's of course. A role that I've seen where he didn't own that character. Um, and whether it was a bad character or a good character, you fell in love with the character. You could have whatever opinions you wanted, but you definitely were attached to whatever character he was playing. So, you know, I think that's, that's definitely where I want to be in my career. I could care less about awards and accolades. I want to feel, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like the awards will come the harder I work, but regardless, if I know I've connected with the character and I can get a reaction out of people like the ones I get when I watch his characters. I feel like that's the reward. Yeah. Oh, I just love that. I think that's so refreshing. You know, you're, you, you, you don't care about the awards. You just want to kind of, you know, perfect your craft. It's all about making that art and just, you know, creatively, you know, trying to push yourself as in every which way you can. And I think that's great. And like you said, with all that hard work, yes, the success and all the rewards will definitely come. So yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I just want to be like him one day. Of course there's others. I mean, uh, Michael B. Jordan, I've never felt a, a movie touch me the way Creed touched me. That was, mm-hmm. my, that was my birth Rocky. I didn't have, I didn't grow up in the Rocky era. I grew up in the Creed era. So that was my Rocky. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, Will Smith, Zell, Al Pacino. But right now, Wesley's who I've been studying the most. Yeah, and I can definitely, yeah. No, I definitely understand. He's definitely one of those actors, so versus so versatile and dynamic. It's just that, yeah, you can you can just play anything and just, just do it with such ease. Yeah, I can definitely see why you would say Wesley Snipes is one of your favorites, as well as, you know, Michael B. Jordan. To me, he's, you know, really becoming the one of the actors of his generation, just, just redefining what it is to be an actor, really. So um, those are really great people to definitely look up to, and um, you definitely are on your way to becoming like that. So definitely keep going towards that goal. Thank you so much. I received that, too. I received all the nice things you're saying to me today. That's nice. Uh, no problem. Yeah. I, I really- I mean, I would. I, I hope. I hope I do reach at least half of the goals I have in my life. I hope nothing crazy takes place that deters me from that. So right, you know, I right, receive. absolutely. And you know, just to go on, um, Terrell, can you tell us? You know, what's the most difficult thing about acting as an actor? What would you say is is, is very difficult? I'm impatient. So the hurry, <laughs> the hurry up and wait about acting. For me, I cannot book a role and be totally fine, but just tell me if I booked a role or not. Like, I hate being on hold for weeks and then feeling like I can't go nowhere or I can't plan nothing or I can't do anything. It's like, as I think that's the worst part, like hearing that, oh, Terrell, you might be busy in this window, but we'll let you know like a day before if you will oh, be. No, All these no. other things are popping up 
and I'm sitting there feeling like I'm stepping on other people's toes and slowing other people down. Um, that's why I fell in love with the independent game so much. As much as I love and respect casting directors, I just cannot wait on anybody. I love the independent game, and I love in these down moments where I'm not booked, like right now, where I get to just do my thing. I just shot a short last week, uh, and I have really good friends attached that stepped out on faith and believed in me. So, like, uh, there's going to be a lot more directorial projects coming out for the rest of the year, at least four between now and December. So, um, you know, I guess the hurry up and wait thing sucks. But in the meantime, between that and my master's program, I'm busy. So, you know, it's a lot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, you know, it's really a weird thing that we actually get to hear about the process that goes into auditioning. You know, most people just think, you know, you just go in there, say a few lines, and then hopefully, you know, someone will call you back. What is the actual real process of auditioning? I guess it varies. Um, again, I'm not necessarily new to this. At the same time, though, I have friends that have been doing this well before I was. And for them, they've auditioned all across the country. So for them, the process might have been a little different. For me, my first audition took place in Atlanta, and it was on tape. Now, from what friends have told me, taped auditions is pretty prevalent in Atlanta, but not very much so in New York or Los Angeles. And I just recently started auditioning in other places. I've booked in other places, but my book of my first few auditions were all on tape. So learning that process was interesting because I feel like every casting director's preference is different. So you have to pay attention to the taping instructions. Um, But if it's a typical audition and you walk in, I guess... Stick to your choices, man. Uh, I guess I can give more uh, tips than the process because I guess the process varies depending on your casting director. But no matter what you do, I would say go in feeling and looking like the character. Don't overdo it. Um, know all of your lines. Try to be off book. Be engaged mm-hmm. with the director and everybody else in the camera in the room. And... Um, stick to your guns because there's no way to know what the actual project entails. Most times you don't get the full script and it's not like the director and writer is in the first audition every single time to tell you what the character is about. A lot of times you walk in there with the casting director who may have just gotten the sides themselves (laughs) and you're going for it and just doing whatever feels right. As long as you trust your decisions and you do a good job, you'll at least, whether you book the project or not, establish a relationship with the casting director, which will lead to more opportunities later, so. Yeah, and that was a really good advice. I really like that, definitely. And I really hope, you know, young actors uh, who are listening in, especially our Black Talent TV audience, I really hope that you take what you says, you know, because that's definitely important, especially with the, you know, auditioning. So I really appreciate you, you know, on your thoughts on that. So for sure. Of course, of course, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, Terrell, like, as we were discussing before, it, you you are on your way. You are, I would consider you a rising star, a rising actor, because you're on your way to, I believe, you know, prominence, especially in, you know, both independent and, and, and directing. You know, how do you keep yourself, you know, grounded with all of these, you know, you're around, you're around different people, just especially, I know you got to be around some celebrities. So I know you got to, uh, you know, you're, like I said, your star is rising. How do you keep yourself grounded throughout all of this? Um, that's a good question. I didn't, <laughs> grow, I didn't grow up wanting to be an actor more than I wanted to grow up being comfortable. Um, I, I didn't grow up with money. My mom still works at night, every single night. So my motivation when I wake up in the morning is deeper than just being famous and being rich and having attention. I'm trying to change people around me. So, um, you know, I pray a lot. I realize that I'm nowhere near the best. I know that there's so many people out there that would devour me in an audition. They're hungrier than me when I walk in and they, they can be, or at least they, they exist in the world where someone out there wants it more than you do. Um, and I realize that I'm replaceable. There is no role that I've booked that somebody else couldn't have booked. It's just God gave it to me. 
So I guess understanding that talents come from God, you have a responsibility to those talents. You can't be boastful about your talents. You can't walk around feeling like, you know, you can, you can sharpen your skill, but the ability to act or be comfortable is a gift from God in itself. Mm -hmm. So I can't walk around feeling like I'm high and mighty because I'm capable. Everybody can be capable. It's, it's more so understanding that just like there are people before me and this world was existent well before I came, it's going to be fine when I leave. And my only job is to do what I can do. So I don't, I don't necessarily worry too much about how people respond to me or think about how people feel about the decisions I make. I kind of just make them. And, you know, I booked and it's been phenomenal, but you know, I have a project coming up. The last project to come out this year is a Christmas movie. Let's just say that's the last thing that ever comes out that I ever do. I feel like God has blessed me with enough talents and resources around me to make sure I can still feed my family other ways. Um, and since me booking another job isn't necessarily up to me, or at least getting called in for auditions for the most part is up to somebody else, I can't give that too much control. I got to just wake up every morning and work like I don't have a job and um, do everything I can. I, I don't think you should ever leave the ground. I think you should always be uncomfortable. Being grounded is great. And um, if you ever float, you, you going, what goes up comes down. So if you just yep. stay fine, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I is so agree to that. What, you know, keeping yourself grounded, that is a very important thing. And yeah. I'm so glad you have that mindset, you know, you know, Terrell, because yeah, it's a very important thing, especially have, especially when you're an actor, especially when you're in Hollywood, especially with the Hollywood message that says, you know, fame and money is everything. I'm glad that you see past the little, little white lies and see the true meaning of what you're trying to do. I, I, I totally respect you for that. Yeah, 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 yeah no doubt. And um, I feel like that's important. I feel like there's a misconception that comes with, especially the beginning stages of this. It's not like, I'm out here making crazy money. Uh, it's not like I'm out here rich. Uh, a lot of times, and I don't think it's a huge secret, a lot of people don't even recognize me for me sometimes. They just think they see me somewhere and think I look like somebody. So who am I to walk around feeling like I'm high and mighty? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm merely somebody who's doing what they're supposed to be doing. I'm just listening and trying to be receptive to what God has for me. And if that means I'm in front of the TV or behind the desk, I'm just going to do what he tells me to do. Right now, he's telling me to act, so that's that's what I'm gonna do. Mm hmm. And good thing too, because like I said, you've been booking more and more great roles. You know, uh, as I said before in the introduction, you are also in the huge movie Superfly, and I know you can't reveal too yeah, yeah. much because the movie will be coming out soon. But yeah. can you give us a little tidbit about how you got uh, involved in the in the movie? Yeah. Um. A big shout out to the casting director, Phil Seen in Paris. Um they really looked out for me. They casted me in Love, Simon. Um, and I got called in for this project. Luckily, I got a role. And I can't talk too much about my character, but I will say, I will say my character, um, what goes on with my character creates a huge shift in the storyline. I can say that. I can I'm not necessarily a lead character, but the conflicts that spark as a result of my character are pivotal to the storyline, the arc of other characters. So uh, I'm definitely proud to be a part in that capacity. Um, again, I'm not a lead. You're not going to see me throughout the entire film, but when you see me, I'm supposed to be in that scene. Something is supposed to happen. My presence is felt. So I'm just grateful to be a part in that capacity. I know it's only going to get bigger from here and working with Trevor, mm -hmm. uh, working with Lex, working with uh, KR, working with everybody, uh, Director X, everybody. It was a, a huge honor. It was a huge honor. There's so much excellence and there's so many young stars in the rise in that film. I just felt lucky to be a part. I felt like for a moment, I didn't deserve to be in the room with people that I look up to. And then I forgot for a moment that I belonged in the room. That's why I was there. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, you know, it was, it was really cool to come to terms with that. 
Oh, I am so more excited for the film. I can't wait. You definitely, I know the Black Talent TV audience, I know they're super excited to see this too. Um, I, I, I'm definitely going to be seeing it with my mom. She's excited. She watched uh-huh. the, yeah, she watched the original, so she's definitely going to come see this. So we're all really excited. So yeah, everyone, yeah. definitely, definitely look out for that movie when it comes out. We are so excited for it. And uh, Terrell, I cannot wait to see you in it. Um, Thank you. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see what else you're gonna do too. But oh, I cannot wait for that movie. It looks, it looks like it's gonna be just, just the coolest movie out this year. <laughs> I don't. I, 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 I definitely feel like it's gonna be super fly for sure. Like, no, <laughs> not, really uh, <laughs> nice. I'm glad. I'm glad it's a follow up too. I, I, I've heard a little debate. I think people are prejudging the film before they see the trailer, um, because obviously the the major black film to come out this year so far has been Black Panther. And this mm-hmm. is definitely the other side of uh, entertainment in regards to uh, the images. However, I think that's the beauty with black culture. I think you can switch from gospel to trap of course. And, and have just as much fun. And I feel like the way people can find an appreciation for, for Black Panther, I feel like there's going to be also appreciation for the range that Superfly shows. We can oh, literally... Yeah into the other and it'll be excellent regardless so i can't wait for when this movie comes out and it'll be two films led by uh led by black people that show what we can do on a serious level absolutely that's what i'm most proud of like i i view black panther as a win and i didn't even get an audition for the movie (laughs) 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 i feel like that 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 was wonderful (laughs) <laughs> like that was a win that was a win for the culture and I feel like this is going to be another win for the culture I feel like it's going to be the one two punch we give you this side and we can give you this side and you're going to be entertained regardless because that's just the magic you know oh yeah and absolutely and I think you know with the people who are you know judging this before they see the trailer and you know they did the same thing with black panther they judged black panther before they even saw the first trailer of it and then they saw the trailer and then the trailer ended up you know breaking records so honestly i i feel the same thing will happen with superfly all the judgment and then they'll see the movie and then it'll just be like the biggest thing the second biggest oh. thing you know next to black panther to come out so it's of course and it's, it's gonna be superfly too so i can't wait Oh, yeah. I cannot wait, too. I cannot wait. Black Talent TV audience, make sure you definitely check that movie out, and make sure you definitely check Terrell out in there. We'll be looking for you. Uh, But just to continue on, um, can you you tell us, director-wise, who would you love, dream dream director to work with? Who would you love to work with? Ryan Coogler. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No arguments there. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, people, I think it's not even because I want to act on camera with him. I've been doing research papers on Ryan Coogler since Fruitvale Station came out mm-hmm. because I always, always wanted to be a writer and a director. Acting is new. Acting is new for me. I've always wanted to work with him behind the scenes. I feel like I'm not from Oakland. My mom's from Oakland. She moved to Compton when she was five. My dad's from Watts. I was born in LA. However, I feel like being from California, having family in the Bay, growing up in LA, listening to his interviews, I feel like there's no other director that has stayed so true to his environment that I've ever witnessed in my 24 years. I'm sure they're out there. I'm positive they're out there. I mean, you got your John Singletons you have. I mean, I can go down the list of uh, thousands not, mm-hmm. thousands, not thousands, I'm exaggerating, but like there's many directors that stay true to the culture. But Ryan Coogler, I feel like there's no money, there's no there's no amount of money you can throw at him that's gonna make him act differently. I have friends that worked on Black Panther. He just as he just as chill as he was in the interviews. And I can't wait to shake his hand one day because I feel like um I don't know, to be in a room with somebody that I've been admiring before I admired any actor. I think that's going to be really cool. And I do eventually work with him. I feel like my ultimate goal is to switch between Ryan Coogler and and, and Michael B at any given moment. Um, That's why I went to school for film and that's why I'm acting now. Um, And that's why I'm in my master's for writing. I feel like 
I'll be able to utilize everything I'm capable of and really make a good future for myself in this industry. But yeah, uh, I digress because I could talk for hours about that. Ryan Coogler for sure. Ryan Coogler. Oh, I definitely understand. Trust me, I definitely understand your feelings on that with Ryan Coogler. He's definitely a director that has changed the game. I mean, he is definitely, uh, I mean, honestly, his movies, I, I saw Fruitville Station. I've seen a lot of his movies and it's just, it's just him and him and Michael B. Jordan just make magic every time they're in a, in a movie together. So it's, it's, I can definitely understand, you know, your admiration for both of them because they really are really changing the game of, of acting and directing. And, and it's so awesome to see that they're also inspiring yeah. such a younger generation. So, you know, more, of, you know, especially, you know, young generations as ourselves will make bigger impacts, you know, when we become just like them. So I think that's great. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, I don't know, I guess as you were talking, I was even thinking about the idea of touching somebody the way Ryan Coogler's mm -hmm. career touched me. Um, I've written my first feature and we're about to produce it. And I can't wait to get out my first feature before I'm 25. And I can't wait to start climbing and elevating as my career and my platform grows, the money that I get from the projects I want to continue to put into my own projects so I can, you know, have a hand in changing my own life. I feel like I, I can't wait to have a circle or at least meet somebody who can be like, I don't know. I can't wait to be the Michael B. Jordan to somebody else who's like Ryan Coogler. I can't wait to be Ryan Coogler for somebody else. Right. I'm very excited about whatever is supposed to happen. I know something's going to happen. So I'm just receptive. Oh, yeah. Whatever God says first is first. So I'm, I'm with whatever, to be honest with you. We all feel that you're on the on the precipice of something great there, Terrell. So it's just like we just like we said, it's just a matter of time. It's just that right role, right time, and and you'll just watch. You'll see. You'll you'll be everywhere. You you'll be tired. That's how everywhere you'll be. You'll be tired. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So final question here for you. Thank you. And I receive everything. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. So final there question there for you, Mr. Terrell. So can you tell, you know, me and of course the Black Town D audience, any other future projects that you're involved with that we can check you out in the future? Oh, I know I can. I don't know if I am allowed. Um, don't give too much if you're not allowed. Just to something, just anything else. <laughs> Like you got homies that are part of the projects that be talking. You're like, I don't know if we allowed to say that, but you already said it. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll say this because if I'm in trouble, I'm already in trouble because I already said it in the previous interview. There is a Christmas movie coming out later on this year that I'm affiliated with. Um, I don't know if I can necessarily say the name again. I haven't been in trouble yet, but if you pay attention to me around the holidays, there's a very fun moment for me to play somebody hilarious. I could play a comedic role in a Christmas movie later this year. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and there's a couple other things. I mean, uh, with Step Up being renewed and Cobra Kai being renewed and um, a few other projects coming back, there's a lot of possibilities. Nothing confirmed. I can't say on the record that I'm affiliated with anything officially. However, you know, it's, it's looking good for a lot of projects. So good. I'm hoping to at least be busy enough to have enough going on in 2019. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we'll definitely look out for you during the holidays and definitely we'll be looking out for you in the new Superfly movie. Like I said, we're super excited. Terrell, I really do appreciate you coming down. It's coming and sitting and talking with me and giving us your thoughts. Uh, like I said, uh, I know pretty soon you'll just be busy. So I know Taking time is not as easy, so I really do appreciate you taking your time and talking with us. And I, I know Black Talent TV audience, is, is, if they're not more excited about the Superfly movie, they are now. So we appreciate you. Yo, I, I'm just happy to be here. I'm glad that we have something to talk about and that y'all would want to talk to little old me. I'm grateful to be here on such a platform. And yo, anybody listening, man, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. Hopefully I didn't bore y'all to death. And thank you so much for having me on the show. It really does mean a lot. Of course. No problem. Of course. We have, you know, this is what Black Time TV is here for. We, we are here to give, you know, 
those who deserve a platform a platform. So we felt like you deserve one because your projects continue to get bigger and bigger. And we just cannot wait to see what else, what else you're going to bring to the table, Terrell. And I know Black Town TV, they've been following you for a while. So I know they're excited to see what else you're going to be bringing to the TV as well. So we are so excited. I, again, the honor is all mine. I'm glad to have even sparked y'all mind like that. So, yo, uh, I, I can't wait to come back. Hopefully I have more to talk about. Oh, absolutely. We'll definitely have you back. We'll definitely have you back. Let's have you back for the holiday special so you can actually give us more tipping on the Christmas film. How about that? All right, for sure. Let's do this this month. Okay, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I want to thank everybody again for listening in to Mr. Actor Terrell. Again, make sure you guys check him out in uh, Superfly, of course. You can check him out in, like, uh, in Cut Up. Uh, in Love, Simon, and, and a bunch of others. Again, you can kiss him on the quad and all the other stuff that he's going to be bringing to the table. Make sure you guys check him out. He's been, he's a very gifted young man, and we cannot wait to see him uh, more in the future. Of course, you guys know I am Simone Jackson, your hostess with the mostest. We'll be back again to bring you guys another great episode of Be In The Talk. Remember, if you guys like to advertise or come down and sit with me and talk and chat with me, make sure you guys check us out at info at blacktontv.com. We love to hear from you. All right, you guys, this is the end of the show. I am Simone. I want to thank Terrell, everyone listening in one more time. Until then, bye-bye.